Louise? So fortunately for you, um, I live out in the country and my internet's not the greatest. So you'll be able to hear me, hopefully, but you can't see me. And it just froze up. There. Okay, so some of the things that we're going to cover, and this is Helen's webinar. I am not taking credit for it. This is just her information. So we're not going to teach you how to do tuck and rolls, but we're going to talk about the duties you need to know. Um, we're talking in a, we're going to have a brief description of what the chief umpire, assist chief, section head umpire, and a chief lap scorer does. We're going to discuss what observing and reporting meet optimum number of umpire and um, comments, and then we go on to questions. So, in general, um, what is and officials are knowledgeable, systematic and aware, caring but firm, consistent, congenial but impartial, calm and composed, presentable with proper attire, and as an umpire, they should be invisible. Um, now, we all know that's not possible to be invisible as an umpire, but you don't want to draw attention to yourself, is what I would say. And so that's what officials are in general, but you know what, let's go back and look at it as, as, a, as an umpire. Yes, you need to be all knowledgeable. Yes, you need to be systematically and aware. You really don't have to be that caring, long as you're consistent. You don't have to be congenial, long as you're impartial. So that's, what's one of the joys about being an umpire? So as an the umpire is said to be the eyes of the track referee without the authority to make any final decision. So I always say bonus. You get to be out there. All you need to do is report any anomaly, any incident that you see. Track referee is going to make all the decisions. They're going to take all the heat. You just sit back and watch the race. You observe closely. Um, if there's an, a violation or a failure or an infringement, then you write up a written report. In some cases, you might be asked to lap score or run the wind gauge or be a manual timer as a backup. Um, you find the umpires on the track. You're going to find them for the running races is race walk off out of stadium for cross country road running marathons mountain racing race walks um, don't panic when you see a race walk there you are not you won't be a race walk judge you're still working as an umpire so as an umpire the things you're going to observe is the lanes the competitors the hurdles the steeplechase barriers the relay zones baton exchanges Basically, you're observing everything that's happening on the track. You're going to report any infractions, any infringements, if there's a dropout or a do not finish, and you're also going to assist with lap scoring. So some of the observations are going to include um, athlete bib number or their name, their hip and chest numbers, athlete colors, school name, club name, anything like that. And the biggest purpose of that is so you have that information when you write your report. And there is absolutely nothing wrong by writing that information down on a scrap piece of paper. If you're, for example, at the start of the 100 meter, write down the, the bib number of all the athletes in the lane so you got it. So you're going to include the lanes on the straightaways and on the bends, particularly on the bends. You're going to watch for a proper cut in. You're going to observe, are the hurdles the right height? Are the right number of flights out there? Are the weights adjusted with the heights? And are they in the right positions? For steeplechase barrier, same thing. Is the heights there? Is the bump have water in it? Are all the cones out for the water jump? For, you're going to watch the baton exchange for the relay zones. And you're going to watch this surrounding area. Mainly, is I would say is you're watching for safety. Um, when we talk about the hurdles in the steeplechase, that is not necessarily your responsibility, especially at a higher caliber 
meat. So there's absolutely nothing wrong by just keeping an eye on it to make sure it's all hunky-dory. So different reporting would include um, any infractions, infringements on the bends or on the straightaways. Hurdle infractions or infringements, including arms flailing and hitting the other competitors. Um, if there's a cut in line, making sure that they cut in, they don't cut in too early. Um, is there dropouts or do not finishes? And where did they occur? Where did they leave the track? Um, did somebody step off the track and back on the track? Um, if they are they on or over the line on the bends and the straights? And not only on or over, how far? How many? How far over did the line they go? How many steps are they over the line? Or in the case of a wheelchair, how, how many inches are did they go over the line? So you're gonna watch for pushing, shoving, impeding the progress of another athlete. In your opinion, was it deliberate? Um, the other thing you're watching for is failure to exchange the baton correctly. Is the athlete receiving any assistance? Are they being paced? Is there wheelchair drafting? Um, wheelchair drafting is if the front wheel of the wheelchair goes between the back two wheels, you watch for that. It's not illegal, but if there's an accident afterwards, you're gonna know whose fault it is. So it's something you kind of gotta watch for. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Is there a biggest example of that is swearing? So if you think you saw something, you probably did. Write it down, either make a report or write it down. And so I would say on that, that is something that needs to be established at the beginning of the meet with your chief umpire and your track referee. What do they want? Do they want to report for absolutely everything? Do they only want to report for certain things and you make notes about any other situations and then they can come back to you for details? So. Find, find that out ahead of time. So when you're making a report, things you do. So the first thing you do is you need to signal to your section head or you, to your assistant chief umpire. You need to show them a yellow, meaning it's like a caution, like something's not quite right here. Um, you can walk out on the track and put a piece of tape down and so, you, so, they, so somebody else can come and see where the refraction is. Start filling out your umpire report. And then when your section head comes over, um, then you can explain it to him verbally what you saw. Do not leave your position because quite often the next race is coming around while you're still writing a report from the last race. So fill out the form as best you can, sign it, write the time. Um, the biggest thing we need from those reports is accuracy, but we also need them quickly. And that's, that will come with time. Um, for distance races, if you need to say what lap an athlete is on, it is not necessarily what lap the athlete is on, it is what lap it is according to what the leader is on. To signal a to your section head um, a dropout, you're going to like wiggle back and forth between your yellow and your green so they know. Um, in the event you're writing reports, don't stand with other umpires. Stand by yourself and write your report. It's cool. Um, the other thing is, so you stay in your possession. Your section head will come to you to gather the report. You don't have to take it to them. So this is an example of an umpire form. This is um, Ontario's. I think the rest, all of the rest of Canada does uses something very similar. So you indicate what event, what athlete number, or if you didn't catch the number, anything, anything distinguishing about them so that you can, so they can be identified. Um, odds are you're not gonna be able to fill in all of that information, but get what you can. Um, on, the in, on the oval, you indicate what, where you were standing at the time, and you're noted by a number. Um, write, then write a brief description of what you observed, um, write your name, sign it, put the time. For, so one example, so if it was a DNF, so you're going to put down where you are and then just so align where the athlete was and where they all walked before they exited the track. If it steps over the line, you put a little X for every step that they took. 
So the role of the chief umpire. So they communicate with all the umpires assigned to the meet. Um, you assign a, an assistant chief umpire, section heads, chief lap scorers, and then you break the t the your umpires down into teams and lap scoring teams. And we'll go through that sheet in a second. You prepare the ovals for the events where the positions of the umpires. Um, these ha technically have to be approved by the track referee. So you, then you distribute the umpire manuals, binders, folders. Every province has slight variations on how that is handled. Um, you provide the oval sheets, the team sheets, meet schedules, and any other pertinent information. So then review with everybody the signaling, what you, what you want from them. Uh, then you, you usually have a meeting with your assistant umpire, section heads can then go down and talk to their teams. So watch for your signals from your ACU, your section heads. And then once you have this from your team, then you in turn signal to the track referee, either an all clear or that you have a yellow. You collect, at the end of the meet, you collect all the manuals or binders and along with any radios, walkie talkies or whatever may be. And the track referee may assign some different um, duties as well. Um, at a higher caliber meet, you are going to uh, be in charge of making sure that the umpires, with the order that they're using for walking on and off. Or you can also assign that to somebody else on your team if you wish. Um, you can meet and you would meet with the track referee and TIC, possibly technical manager mainly you're reporting for your track referee. So these are examples of the ovals that you would prepare, one for every type of event, and all the sheet that is in a section. So the positions of the umpires are indicated with a number on the track, and then that number corresponds with the number that's on the team sheet, which also then corresponds with their binders. Uh, usually these ovals also indicate um, where, oh, who you would signal to. So if I'm on part number three, then it shows me who I need to signal to once I see something. So the role of the assistant chief umpire, they step in if the chief umpire is called away. Um, they usually officiate it from the different side of the track from the chief umpire. So that way they got one is on each in charge of the umpires on each side of the track. They collect the umpire reports from the nearest section head and then relay the information to the chief umpire. Sometimes that might be walking the form over. Sometimes that may be radioing them over and telling them what it is. Um, if you're radioing, then you can say, hey, this is what I think it should be. Again, that depends on the relationship established ahead of time. Um, if you have an umpire, umpire that needs to walk away for whatever reason, then you're going to step in and cover or make sure the position is covered. At the end of the meet, you're going to assist the chief on his duties of collecting everything. Um, you may be asked to become a chief umpire for a session or two, and um, which is all part of the upgrading your skills, preparing to be upgraded. So a section head, they attend the meeting with the chief umpire, record what the chief umpire wants, so then you can in turn and convey that to your team. Then you hold a meeting with your team to relay the information that the chief umpire wants them to know. Assemble your team um, at the assigned time and in place getting ready to walk on. Um, if you're re requested, ensure that the umpires mark on the track where an infraction recurred. And at the, at the end, once it's all resolved, then you can remove the tape. Um, check that your team um, members are signaling to you after the end of the race. Um, and then you walk to the umpire to collect the report if necessary. You make sure that you signal to your assigned 
chief umpire or the so once you have the report check the report of the umpire make sure it's got all the necessary information and then she has written here and you initial or assign it now any form that i have seen has never had i'm thinking as i'm going through her notes i'm thinking that's a really cool idea so again maybe practices from every province um, so once, as a section head, once you've got the report and you think it's got all the information, then you take it to the CU or ACU. Um, so at, as a section head, you're probably going to be in charge of a relay zone. So when, as the athletes are preparing for the relay, you section, you signal to your chief umpire to say, yes, my zone is ready for the race. Um, you may replace an umpire if they need to be excused. Um, and you may volunteer to assist the chief or the assistant chief. Um, one thing, again, it all depends on the relationship established ahead of time. But to me, as section head, if you see something that needs to be tweaked within your team, as far as their placements goes, if you think this one umpire should be moved over slightly to get a better view or to assist on better umpiring, then, then do so. So, role of an umpire. So you go to the assigned position in an orderly manner, and you cr if you're, uh, you usually go to the outside of the track as you walk on, and as the as you receive the signal from the chief umpire, then you walk across to the inside of the track if that's where you're assigned to go. Um, if you're assigned, if you're allowed to sit, you sit down in unison. And again, usually on the signal of the chief or whoever is assigned, or when you're told to do so. Sometimes they want it after every lap on a big race. Um, fill out the umpire report if you observe an infraction or a dropout or some bizarre incident. Um, make notes of those incidents if if the if you've been told they don't want a report then make sure you write notes because they might be coming out back and asking you for some information so if you got notes that's going to help you to recall it um if you see um coaching or assistance being given within your area make sure you report that um check to make sure that the cut in is is correctly marked Check all the correct positioning and height of the hurdles if you're asked to do so, especially in a larger meet, they usually have a team there that they don't, they don't want umpires out there. Then again, you might be asked to adjust them or you might be asked to stand them up again after the hurdle race, depends on the event that you're at. Um, but if you do see a hurdle out of, out of position and they're getting ready, by all means, adjust it. It's at that point, it's a safety issue. So um, position yourself to achieve the best possible view for the hurdles and, and your section head chief is going to review that with you ahead of time. Um, after um, mainly a relay race, um, remove any tape that's within your area so it doesn't confuse the next race, next one on the track. Um, to me, one of the biggest things you should be doing as an umpire or any official out there is, is it safe? Check your surrounding area, make sure that nobody has forgotten what they're doing and they're walking, not walking on the track. That somebody at long jump isn't forgotten their rake is sticking out on the track or a pole is gonna accidentally come. So that is kind of part of your role out there as an umpire. Is it safe for everybody? Um, umpire, fellow umpires, athletes, everybody. If you see a situation that needs to be resolved, tell your section head or your chief umpire or the track referee. Um, one other thing that I would like to put in is you do not need to talk to any coach or athlete. If they approach you, you refer them to the track referee. Don't let them pump you for information. Don't let them say, hey, what happened there? I see there was a report. Don't, do not engage. If you want, you can find out their name so you can report it to the track referee and let them deal with it. But that's not your, that's not your problem as an umpire. You just get to observe the races and report it in. You don't need to have to talk to anybody. So if you've been asked to be a lap scorer or part of the team, 
what are some of the roles you're going to do? Um, as usually it's a section head or an umpire that's assigned to be the chief lap scorer. And then they're also assigned a group of umps, umpires who, will, who consist of the lap scoring team. Um, the chief lap scorer will arrange to have the lap scoring sheets done ahead of time. And usually um, the bib numbers are noted on there. Um, the chief lap scorer will arrange to make sure that somebody's there to ring the bell and show the lap counter. Um, make sure that usually it's arranged by meet directors, but you know, just have a look, make sure the split timer is there. Um, chairs, stools for the lap scorers to, to be seated. seated sorry. Um, a running total should be used and all sheets are assigned and handed to chief lap scorer. I don't get that. I guess at the end, if you're an, if you're a lap score after you're done, you hand it off. Um, so all you need to do, I, we won't go into this extensively, but all you need to use as a as a lap score, you just need to have to worry about ticks that you've seen your your athlete go by. On longer races, you have to put times out. Um, don't panic if you're a you're a lap score. You're only backup. The, the, main, the main lap scoring is done up in photo. You're back up to them for official results, but you are, your purpose there is to be telling the athlete, yes, you're down a lap or you're down three laps or you have two laps to go. That, you're, you're the communication with the athlete. That's your biggest purpose for being out there. Um, if you get confused, talk to your chief lap scorer. So types of meets and the number of umpires suggested. So we have area meets, regional district meets. So they use all levels of umpires. So types of this meets are gonna be all comer meets, twilight meets, local high school meets. Um, the umpire, it's kind of a, it's more of a relaxed thing. The umpires work together as one team and usually one umpire is he's going to be the guy in charge. He's gonna create the ovals or you have ovals already in place. And uh, Helen says that you're going to range from six to 12 umpires. I want to start going to Ontario to do um, officiating because, wow, six to 12 at an all-comer meet. That's pretty impressive. Provincial meet. Um, it's, that meet is usually large enough. You're going to have your track referee, your chief umpire, a couple section heads, ACU. So examples of that are going to be your indoor and outdoor championships, um, conference, um, U sport, high school meet championships, uh, range of umpires you're going to have again, 12 to 24. I'd say in your dreams, but yes, awesome. 12 to 24 umpires. National meet, national championships or international or worlds, not that we see them that often in Canada. So these, um, these types of meets, their designation is um, established by NOC, National Officials Committee, along with the branch chairs when they meet. Um, so the, the meets that we have in Canada that are considered national championships are the under 20 and open, the, the indoor under 18, the combined events championships, the U sport championships, and the Canadian Summer Games. In the at times we have had Commonwealth Games and some such games, um, so which would come under that. So there is a lot more protocol in place for this kind of stuff. Um, usually the NOC and BOC is more um, actively involved to make sure that the level of officials that are at these meets are the caliber that they want. And you're gonna have 20, easily 24 to 32. Um, that's the one joy about being an umpire is when you go to the big meets, you need a lot of them. So your odds of getting to go to the big meets are the odds are greater. It's kind of like winning the lottery. So points to remember about the types of meat um, in the area meat or the, uh, the smaller meats, the umpires acquires the experience that they need that, to learn and then they can improve on their skills uh, to help you get the skills to move up to the next level. 
At a provincial meet, usually um, the umpire's attained level three already, or you're working on a level three. There's a lot more structure to it than the other meets. And um, you're working with teams. That's, that is the biggest difference, is also to learn how to work with teams. Um, at a national, national championship or an international, um, you're now usually a level four or five. Um, there is sometimes there is usually level threes, but that is a privilege to be there as a level three. Um, those meets are usually televised um, or more likely just live stream. And so listen, learn, soak it in, listen to what you're told. Um, oh, these categories apply to world um, para athletics as well as world athletics, the same breakdown. So, as for umpires, the things that you should have in your toolkit is your umpire manual binder, usually provided to you. Um, a lot of people still like to have their own clipboard or folder with them as well. Not mandatory. Again, every province is a little bit different. But you're going to want to bring possibly your pens, your pencil, um, tape, maybe paper clips, small post-it notes, highlights in different colors. If you start working as a, a chief umpire, your highlighters are imperative, so you can be marking down um, where everybody stands, who they're signaling. Um, a signaling device, a yellow and green card. Again, that varies from province to province. Some you need to, as an umpire, you need your own card. Some provinces, that's part of your, your binder. It's right on there. Um, umpire report forms, which are provided for you. Um, a World Athletic Rule Book or a World Para Rule Book. Um, most provinces are supplying the World Athletic Rule Book for their, I don't think all of their officials, but from the other officials as you increase in level. The biggest thing is take your personal items that you need for weather. You know, take, make sure you got your sunscreen and you got your bottled water and you got your raincoat, which is, seems like you need more of that than anything. So, Helen's tips for provincial or higher level meets. So, make sure you arrive an hour ahead of time. If it's going to be a higher level meet, they may even ask you there more than an hour ahead of time. So, find out when they want you there and be there. Um, then you're going to go into your meetings on, and get your instructions for the meet. So, then assemble where you're told to do so 10 to 15 minutes before the start. Um, you're moving on and off the track in an orderly manner, single file. Again, not calling attention to ourselves by doing this at all. Position yourself at the spot you've been assigned to and so that you have a clear view. So it might be that, you know, the chief umpire says you need to stand here, but once you got there, you've got a pole vault standard right in front of you adjust accordingly. Um, if stools or chairs are provided, sit when the chief umpire has instructed you to do so. Height for weight. Um, if they are self-adjusting weights, that's fine. But if they're not, make sure the weights are being adjusted as well as the heights. If you're assigned to the lap counter or the wind cage, practice using it to make sure you know how to do it. Very rarely do we have uh, manual wind gauges anymore, but it happens. Um, lap counters, sometimes they can be sticky, so practice going through it to make sure you know how it's going to work. In the race where there's a cut in, make sure there's the cones are there or the prisms or flags or whatever you're going to use at that meet. Check for the curbings or for, the, or for cones if they're being used. Be familiar with that umpire report. Um, you can even, if you want, sign a few of them ahead of time. So that, um, that speeds up the process a little bit once you get there. Um, so the signal cards in most of Canada is red or red for there is a 
a caution or what you deem as an infraction, green means everything was good. And the DNF, as we talked about, was the wiggling back and forth between the two of them. You are an umpire, not a spectator. Sometimes, especially when it's a hot day, it is very difficult to remain focused, but do your best. Um, do not get distracted by a conversation that somebody else has. Do not let somebody come over and engage you with conversation because you need to be focused. There are people in the stands that are watching you. Um, seek mental help or EMS if required, if an athlete or for another official if needed. But be careful. Do not touch that athlete. And um, if it's a serious one, yeah, it's going to be a no brainer. But if it's a debate, you ask that athlete if you can touch them before you do anything, because as soon as you touch them, they're disqualified. Um, if there is a world para athlete that has fallen, do not assist them back in their chair or push them to get started or try to be nice. Again, as soon as you touch them, they are disqualified. Um, you know what, and if you get bored after this, go on to your website browser, type in Beijing wheelchair, wheelchair race, and you're going to see a horrific wheelchair accident. But the biggest thing you should need to look at is what those umpires do. They came very, very close to causing even bigger accidents by not being aware of what's going on. Um, if you see in a situation where somebody's wandering out onto the track and they need to get off, so yell heads up. Um, if you are not sure of anything pre-event, make sure you ask your section head or your chief umpire or anybody. Ask ahead of time. There is nothing wrong with asking questions. And lastly, uh, some say that at times being an umpire is a very lonely job, especially during distance races. But you are there for the athletes and they appreciate everything you do. Um, I would add to Helen's comment, and you have the best seats in the house. You are right there getting to watch the action. You might not get to watch all the race, but you've seen it. I had a daughter who was a sprinter, and so she said, did you see that race, Mom? I said, yes, I saw that race. Never saw her finish, but yes, I saw that race. So just to note, many of these tips are things that Helen has reserved along the way, and, you know, I talk to uh, seasoned umpires. They're going to have more to tips to give you. So enjoy your journey as an umpire. And thanks to Helen for preparing this PowerPoint. And just remember her and her, her mom in your prayers and your thoughts. Uh, okay. Thank you, Louise. I have a question. Pritam, you, you have a question? Unmute yourself. and. I'll yes, proceed. thank you, Louise. Uh, Louise? Yep. My question would be, is pacing allowed or no? I just want to, to no. speak a bit more on that. No, pacing is not allowed. Okay, that's fine. Even with athletes uh, and uh, running the same event? No. Well, okay. okay. Well, that, that is a wonderful little question. In, in some cases, they're going to have rabbits, and that's hired rabbits, and that's exactly what they're doing is pacing. So that's kind of like one of your million-dollar questions. Thank you. The theory, the theory, no. <laughs> Chantal Gauthier, unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, hi, Serge. Um, oh, Gilles, okay. This is Gilles. I'm with Chantal. Okay. okay wrong, uh, wrong voice. IPad. <laughs> so, how are you doing? Uh, how are you, Louise? I am wonderful now that you're here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, talking about uh, lap scoring, um, there's a rule that says for outdoors meet that 5K and over uh, and up, uh, it, it is mandatory to have a lap scoring team. But uh, for indoors, is there any specific rules that from such an event, uh, let's say from two, uh, 1,500 and more? Uh, yes have to so what is exactly the rule for the indoors meet for that i believe i believe there is no specific rule but rule of thumb is take the distance and so take the outdoor rule divided by two and that's what applies to the indoor so yes you're going to want to 
to lap score the 1500s indoor. Yeah. Um, 800, you only need order of finish. 1500, you need to lap score. 2000, you need to lap score. Um, anything indoor 3000 or over, you need to be recording times. Okay, but uh, let's say for 1500 indoors, uh, this is uh, not mandatory. It's uh, just for a practice, I would say, or it's it's not uh, it's not uh, mandatory. In in Alberta, we always lap score it. Oh, okay, okay. What right. I could say that to add to that is, it's better to lap score on 15, in, indoor 1500, because first of all, you're practicing. And usually it's sometimes and some event, you could have some lapping and in, in indoor yes. lapping is, will kill you at some point. Yeah, I guess the uh, best bet is to look at the seat time um, uh, of every athlete. Yes. And Figure out if there is some lapping to uh, at the uh, during the event and uh, no, taking no chance then and having a lap scoring team. Yeah, the problem is that when you're having a, a no time, that means there's a bet. You can buy a six forty nine and maybe win, and we're not we're not maybe not winning. <laughs> but yeah. the thing is that if you have like more than thirty between thirty and forty five minutes, uh, forty five seconds between the first one and the last one in the 200 meters indoor, for sure that that's a lap, kind of okay. near that lap. Okay. If you have one athlete, it's a different ball game. If you have 10 athletes in the same, I mean, it's, and the problem is that when the, in, the lapping is occur at the finish line, that mean you're having the, the first pack and the second pack lapping at the finish line, that mean that's chaos. The worst place that the lapping is at, could occur is that finish line. Seat times, yeah. seat times are helpful, but don't rely on them because they, do, they don't always, you know, pan out that way. And, and the biggest thing, like Serge says, is practice. Everybody needs practice, Chief Lap, doing lap scoring. Mm -hmm. So the more you do, the better you're going to get. Even right. if you're umpiring and you're not being assigned to the lap scoring team, practice lap scoring when you're out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Other question? Um, yes. Um, Pritam, go ahead. Yes. Unmute yourself. Yes, uh, Louise. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, a, a, an empire reported a potential infringement. And which type of situation do you think the track referee or the chief uh, uh, or the chief empire would uh, have uh, assistance of the uh, video uh, referee to take a decision? Or is it something that, okay, it's straightforward, they can have it or they just go by, it's just a potential infringement. It's not something that might not be something like that. Um, if you're talking a large caliber meat and you have video available as a track referee, I would automatically go to it. If it's a smaller meat, I guess that's a track referee decision. Umpires and chief umpires don't need to worry about that. That's a track referee situation. As umpires, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, that's fine. It's better. It's better to. Does that answer make, your question? Yeah, that's fine. It's better to to write a report than not return a report and something happened and the track referee or the assistant track referee or even the the chief umpires go to you and said, "Do you do you see something?" Because the problem is that usually when they have question and the track referee don't have any the answer, he will go back somewhere in the chain and would ask question and a, either you're taking a note something that something happened it's better to have more note than no note and have a problem at the end of the of the food chain uh eric zemper has a question you can unmute yourself thank you not a question specifically but a comment regarding uh assistance to athletes there is a new rule this year, 6.4.7 in the track rules, technical rules. It says receiving physical support from an official 
or other person designated by the organizers to recover to a standing position or to access medical assistance is yes. allowed by officials. So it's no longer the case that if you touch an athlete, they're automatically disqualified. You can't help them move forward in any way, but you can help them obtain medical assistance or you can help them to recover a standing position as long as you don't move them forward. Great comment, Eric, but we, we, should, we should also ask the athlete first if the, he need help or something. Oh, kind of, absolutely, just, absolutely. Just in case that something happened and uh, you don't want to receive an elbow at some point because he's frustrated about something. Other question? Uh, hi, it's, uh, this is Lily here. Um, yeah. In one of the first um, slides that we have, it's, um, I think it was question uh, two, um, number two, uh, mark the track with tape. Um, I didn't quite catch that. Are you saying if the uh, umpire is, doesn't want it for, uh, is trying to, excuse me, um, I'm getting confused here. Why are we marking the track with tape? So the rule states that um, as an umpire, if you, for example, let's say you took somebody, saw somebody step over the line. Right. So you, you can go out there and put pieces of tape where you saw them step. Is this a new rule? Uh, no, it's always been there. But honestly, I have never seen anybody do it. But you I, could. I had never heard of it. That's, and I've been around for what a while. Personally, what, no, I, no. what, what I tell new umpires to do, and what I like to do is, they, as soon as the, the race is cleared, it's off the track, I step out onto the track to the exact spot, just for a couple minutes, so I make darn sure I'm writing the right lane number down. Right, so I'm physically standing in the right spot, so I don't get confused. I write down the lane number and then I back off. Right, but like I say, you are allowed to put a couple pieces of tape down to help you remember slash prove to somebody else that's where it happened. It doesn't usually happen in practice, but yes, you can. Okay, but that tape has to go out after. Does that answer the question? Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, that, that's good. Thank you, Louise. And the other quick question was, um, wheelchairs, uh, drafting is not allowed, I take it, you said, right? Uh, the rules don't specifically say you can't draft. Well, that's why I was wondering if I- It is, it, I is, it is a dangerous thing to be doing. Yeah, you, should, you usually don't see it, but- um, no, usually you don't because it's a dangerous thing to do. Okay, thank you. That's great, Luis. Thanks. Any other question? I did see uh, Pritam or Cecile. Ian here. Ian, go ahead. Uh, I would say don't be afraid to speak up if you see a problem uh, and it, um, and I'll. I'll give you an example. Um, I saw our, there was an umpire that heard a uh, pole vault bar uh, come down, it made a noise. It caused a problem at the start. Everybody at the start had their uh, ear protection on. Nobody realized what had happened. And the umpire came over and talked to the starter. So that is something that if, highly unusual, but uh, don't be afraid. Excellent point, thank you. Any question, any comment? Anybody? Going once, going twice, going third time. I want to thank you all to attend the webinar, webinar umpires thing. 
And I want to thanks also Louise to take over uh, 